Okay, this is atmosphere and weather. Again, there's going to be four units in this main unit or four parts. The diurnal energy budget, looking at the all the energy that comes in and what happens to it uh, through the sun. And part two, looking at the global energy budget, then weather processes and phenomena. And then we look at climate change and also urban climates as a micro climate case study. This unit is particularly difficult for a lot of students. So I do recommend you to stop whenever you feel like you didn't understand something because in a lot of cases what happens is the previous uh, knowledge is very important for the next section. So if you don't understand it in one, then to continue to learn, you might find things more and more and more difficult. So the idea of how I've taught this is I'm just gonna teach you a little bit at a time um, make sure you understand each part and then you're connecting ideas up later on in each part. Okay, so make sure you stop, make sure you understand everything before moving on. Daytime energy budget. So we get our energy from the sun. We call this incoming solar radiation or short wave radiation. Also insulation for short. So we imagine 100% of that coming down into the earth. So this is just a basic diagram, insulation 100% coming down into the earth. So this is giving us the energy during the day and obviously it's not going to be there during the night. So that's the big difference between night and day. It does change with latitudes and the time of day and potentially the season depending on where you are in the world. And we usually have visible light, UV, some infrared. And that's why it's actually bright, right? So we're getting that kind of intensity of shortwave radiation. Okay, so the key now to understanding this is basically like what's happening with all that energy. How do we deal with that? How do we budget it? So the daytime energy budget, the first thing is some of this radiation that reaches the surface is actually reflected. So it doesn't actually heat up that much. It's just reflected back and it goes back out to space. This is reflected solar radiation. Now the reflected solar radiation, uh, it reflects off a surface and that action is known as albedo. So albedo effect then ha is different on different surfaces. So it might be say very low in a place that has low reflectivity, like for example, over dark soil. Um, but if you've ever been on snow, you know that there's a layer off it, the sun can be reflected off the snow and back upwards. And uh, yeah, it has a very strong layer and is very, very bright. So ice and snow, for example, and clouds have a high reflectivity or a high albedo. Here are a couple of examples then. We have clouds, thick has 0 0.6 to 0 0.9, quite high, very high actually, so 0 0.9 being one of the highest. Um, and then you have thin clouds then, which are much less effective. So high altitude thin clouds then allow for quite a lot of incoming solar radiation to pass through. Snow, if it's fresh and old, makes a big difference. So snow, fresh snow can be one of the highest albedos that you can find, it almost reflects everything. And then the old snow then at 0 0.4 is then absorbing a lot more than the fresh snow. Sand as well can be quite diverse, but very, very low in comparison to snow, for example. So we know we've got lots of ground and surfaces covered in sand around the world and deserts and coastlines. Different forests then can have a very high uh, difference between albedos. Um, and we can see the deciduous and carnivorous there having quite different ones. The other thing to note is that some of these last uh, all year round or are perennial. So deciduous might not be uh, very effective with its albedo uh, during the winter when it's lost its leaves. Agricultural crops then as well have quite a high amount, but then to think about it, the difference between agriculture and soil could be a very big difference in seasonal uh, input of solar radiation. So we do cut crops and we harvest crops and take them out of the fields. And when we do that, we leave behind soil. So we can see that the albedo effect is reduced, which may increase the temperatures in the local area. So it's good to have a couple of examples here, uh, especially if you end up discussing this. Uh, it often comes up in like a section one of the exam, as uh, something to explain. We then, so, so far we have incoming solar radiation. We have then reflected solar radiation going back, which we just discussed with albedo. The third one is surface and subsurface absorption. So this is actually the heat going into the ground. So the ground is gonna heat up and that does it with different uh, surfaces might absorb it better. For example, bare rock is gonna absorb the heat during the day uh, very well actually and, and, and move downwards. 
So that is then stored and then can be re-released later. So the fourth one then is a sensible heat transfer. So the heat is transferred away instead of heating up the surface or being reflected, it can actually be sent away. So a way to understand this is a very difficult concept because we can't usually see this. But the sensible heat transfer, if we think about a hot air balloon, I hope that helped. If you want to continue learning, the rest of the course is below in our link. Um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos. There's over 10 hours of videos of the content. Um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies, the concepts in each section, and you can just take it at your own pace. Um, within each course, then you'll get a PDF printout, some short questions and a video that just discusses the different parts uh, of the course. So those are the full videos there and should give you all the information, oops, should give you all the information that you need throughout the course in order to successfully answer any exam questions. We also have a second course that's just dedicated to the exam paper skills, where you learn what a good example is, what a bad example is, why different scores are awarded for different reasons, and it should be able to elevate your uh, ability to write these answers. It's also going to give you examples, so you've got like 80 example uh, exam paper questions to look at and to learn from, and to potentially use some of the information in that as you're going forward. So it's also a, a good way to learn too. Okay guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to answer them.